ask him for things. Don't just ask him to solve the problem. Let, wait on the instructions and let him tell you what he needs for you to do. And he will ask you what's in your house. And so I ask you today, what you got in your house? What's in you, your spiritual house? What's in you that could bring you out of what you're in versus waiting on somebody else to get something from them? He says, you may not get this next miracle, I'm talking early, or this next breakthrough from somebody else because what you're looking for is already in you. Okay, okay, so your, your next move or your next idea or your next creative thing is already in you. And so the prophet tells her, he said, what's in your house? And she says, first of all, she kind of stops and says, I don't have anything. And that's what we do when we're in trials. We basically tell God, I don't have anything. I don't have no money. I'm out of money. I'm out of cash. I'm out of ideas. I done turned every trick. I thought I had the right church on a Wednesday night. I done turned every corner. I done worked every overtime. I done made the pe I don't have anything left to give. And, and she then she tells him I have nothing. Then she's like, hold on. Because I could imagine her as being in debt, being a woman in debt that literally she probably already sold her couch. She probably already sold her furniture. She probably already sold her bed. Y'all know how we get we get that 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 you know that garage sale. Um this is going I got a uh, 50 inch TV <laughs> and it, it's two hundred dollars and I, I can take that if, if if she was already in trouble that she was literally putting everything she already had on the line and she didn't have anything left. She didn't have a flat screen TV. They didn't have that back then anyway. She didn't have, you know, the, the finer things because more than likely she had already spent everything she had and already had given it. And so the man asked her, what do you have in the house? And then she said, well, you know what? If I think really hard, I got a little bit of oil left. If I can just take my mind and stretch and be creative because it's the thing that you think that's not going to work that God wants. I'm going to say it again. It's the thing that you think that's not going to work that God wants. It's the thing that you think is small and insignificant and nothing can come out of it that God is going to work a miracle in it. It's the thing that, come on, you don't want anybody to know about. You're embarrassed of your testimony, that that very testimony is the door that might cause you to stand on platforms and open doors for you. It's that thing that you seem as small and, and you seem that it's minute. It's that thing that you feel like God can do nothing with. It's that thing that you are uncomfortable doing. I hope I'm talking to you. It's that thing that you said, God, I don't want to use that because if I use that, that's embarrassing. If I use that, people will make fun of me. If I, if I pick that up and if I use that, come on, people will have something to say. It's that thing that God is after. God is after that thing that you don't think he wants to use. She said, I don't have nothing but a little oil. That's all I got. And I got to stop right here before I get to the rest because some of you all know how this is going to end. But I want to stop right here and, 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 and share with you the oil is all she needed. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. Some of y'all are looking for other things for my five-member church on a Wednesday night. Some of y'all are looking for things uh, bigger than what is already in your hand. But I just want to tell you that all you need is the oil. You can start over, baby, if you got the oil. You can do it again if, if you got the oil. You can get married again if, if you got the oil. You can start the business again if you got the oil. Come on, God can open doors if you just got the oil. All he needs is the oil. All he needs, come on, is an opportunity. All he needs is for the oil that you think is insignificant that you think God can't use it. All he did is just a little bit of it. Just not a whole lot in this text. She says, all I got is some small oil. All I got is something that I think is not useful. And y'all gonna find out that that thing that you don't think is useful is the very thing that's gonna create your miracle. I'm teaching myself. Happy today. So it's that small thing. That, that, that really is something that is big. And I love God because God loves to, he's masterful in small things. He loves to take small things and feed 5,000 people off of them. Two fish and five loaves of bread. Take a little boy there. Let me tell you, he been there in the audience. He been there amongst the multitude. But but they got hungry and he took something small that they thought, come on, could not feed. And he stretched it. Isn't it something how God can take your little and stretch it for a whole month? You didn't know how you was going to do what you was going to do at the first of June. But here it is, July 1st, and everything is taken care of. I wish I had that. God has made ways out of nowhere. He's even moved into July and August and September and October. And some of y'all are already, God has moved into 
into next year on your behalf. You're already looking into 2021 because he's already ahead of you. Wow. Wow. She said, all I need, he said, I just got a little bit of oil. Matter of fact, she said, I got a jar of oil. A jar of oil. I want to talk about this oil and the significance of what it means to have oil. If you put gas in a car, your gas run out, it's okay. But if you run out of oil, you can actually blow the motor the, in that vehicle. So it's okay when you run out of gas, but when you run out of oil, come on, you got to change the inside. I'm trying to help. It's got to be a transformation on the inside, the workings of that motor. You can't keep going and you out of oil. I've seen people tear cars up because they ran out of oil. The oil will take you a long way. The oil uh, will take you places you thought that it never could take you. And so I want to stop and tell you what does the oil mean. The oil also represents the Holy Spirit. It also means the leader, the guide, the teacher, all of that. It represents God being with you in the middle of a storm. So I don't care if you don't have but a little bit of it. It represents God being with you. A little oil says the Holy Spirit is with you. A little oil says that I cannot fail because God is with me. A little oil says I've already got victory. All I need is just a little bit of it. So I got a jar of oil. I want to stop by Matthew 25, and we'll go back to this verse, and we'll, we'll come back to this verse, um, back to this book of the Bible. Matthew 25th chapter, verses 1. Um, I'm not going to read all the verses, but I want to paraphrase what it says here. It says that, then he said, go borrow vessels. Matter of fact, let me, let me move down. It says, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. Which took, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise. Y'all with me? And five of them were what? Foolish. They were foolish. Them that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, and go it ye out to me. I'm not going to read all of that, but I just want to stop right here to let you know how important it is to have oil and not to run out of oil. You got ten virgins here, five wise and five foolish. And basically this parable that is we're reading is basically Jesus basically explaining to them that when he comes back on the second coming back of, of Christ, there are going to be some people who will not be ready. Their lamps will not be lit. They will not have oil in their lamps. And whether you know it or not, if Jesus is closer to today than he is, was on yesterday. And he is on his way back. We may not know the hour. We may not know the day. We may not know the second. But what we do know that is he's going to return. And so these ten, this, this he said, this is like in the kingdom of God. Five foolish and five wise. They're at a wedding. So back in the Jewish, if y'all don't mind for me to stop right here and, and, and help you out, the Jewish culture was to have the bridegroom, the, vir the virgins. And basically what they would do is they would light the pathway for the wedding party. They would take their lamps and they would have to prepare to put enough oil in these lamps so that the rest of the party could be able to actually see at nighttime. That was their job. That was their duty. Come on, that's what they were supposed to do. And so it says, if you show up at this party, you know you are the bride, you are the um, the person who's supposed to have this oil. You should not run out. And the, back in the Jewish days, what they would have is the um, bridegroom would basically be able to come in whenever he wanted to. The party could be going on two days and the bridegroom ain't got to show up. Ain't got to show up. Then finally can show up unannounced, likened unto the kingdom. And so you got five foolish, five wise who decided to take extra oil, who decided to prepare. I want you to put this in your life right now. For what God wants to do in your life, you can't just take a little. You're going to have to bring some extra oil and be prepared that after this is over, I've got enough during this pandemic that when this is over, I can live for seven months. Y'all don't want to say amen. <laughs> I can live until 2021 because I was not foolish with what God had already given me. I didn't just swindle it or, or lose my mind when I got it. I was wise and I put back and I was prepared and I was ready for Jesus to come. I was ready. Come on for the promotion to happen. Didn't have it yet, but I was already acting like I had it. I was ready for my name to sign on the homeowner's list because I was prepared. I, I, I prepared my time and prepared my credit. Y'all don't want to talk right. And most of all, we need to make sure that we prepare our lives for Jesus coming. We prepare everything else, but do we prepare our lives for 
for his coming? Or do we just live however we want to live? He'll be here tomorrow. He'll be here next week. It's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. But you got five foolish and five wise. And then when the bridegroom came unannounced, they were not prepared. You can read it at your own time. But they had the ones who were wise, they had the oil. They had some extra oil. And and a lot of times people, they don't want to get their own oil. They want to ride off of your oil. I'm going to say amen. They want to ride off of your blessings. They want to ride off of your favor. And and they want to ride off of the word that God spoke to you. It's okay, but you're going to have to have something of your own. I wish I was talking to a single woman. It's okay if I make more than you, brother. It's all right that I have more than you, but at least you got to have something on your on your own. You got to bring something to the table. If I got the house and I got the car and I got the job and I got the kids and I got the food on the table, you going to have to bring something on the table. That's the issue is that we as people, we have relationships that we built where people don't bring no oil. They don't bring nothing to the table because they expect you to always provide. Y'all don't want to say, they expect you to always make a way. They expect you to always fix it. They expect because you've always done it. And if you're always helping people out, you'll never teach them to stand on their own two feet. I wish I could talk the way I want to talk. You actually cripple them. You actually disable them. You actually become a crutch for them where they should learn how to be independent on their own. If you keep showing up for people who never want to bring their oil, who never want to bring anything to the table, I don't mind eating with people if you brought something to the table. That's it. That's it. That's it. So these five foolish and these five wise, five wise, the foolish go up to the five wise. And I'm going to get back to my oil. Uh, I'm going to get back to the widow woman. Y'all hold on just a minute. And so the five foolish and the five wise, they literally, the foolish goes up to the wise and be like, hey, um, I forgot my oil. Matter of fact, the verse before that says that they went to sleep. They went to sleep. And many people miss their breakthrough because they're asleep. They miss the bridegroom because they're asleep. Uh Uh-huh, let me hear the prophetic word. There are many people that may miss Jesus coming back because they're asleep in their spirits. They don't believe that Jesus is going to come back again. They don't believe, uh uh-huh, that he's going to crack the sky. They don't believe that he'll show up in a twinkle in the moment of the eye. Uh Uh-huh, the twinkling of the eye. They don't believe that Jesus is on his way back. And so they got caught slipping and they got caught sleeping. One reason people don't have enough oil is because they're lazy. Y'all don't want to say amen. I wish I would say amen. Uh They they don't want to put any time in. They don't want to put in the effort. People will use you up if you let them. Y'all don't want to say amen. People will burn you out if you let them. People will flip you over and turn you out if you let them. Uh And so they come to the wise people, the five wise. Let me watch my tone. Thank you, Minister Amos. And they're like, I don't have no oil. Can I borrow some of your oil? And the wives were like, you know what? This is this serious. That means I could miss Jesus by trying to help them out. Because it's always the helpers, people that give, that get in the crossfire of when I should give or when I should not. There is a time that it's okay to say no. Y'all don't want to say, it's okay to say, I can't do it this time because I can no longer kill myself to allow you to live. All right. I can, y'all don't want to say amen. I can no longer drown while you live. I, I can no longer suffocate me while you breathe. And y'all don't, I'm talking better than y'all. I can no longer hurt me to help you. I just helped about five people. 
can we have some of your oil? Can, can we have some? And, 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 and the wives, I, I'm, I could just see them like, man, y'all should have y'all should got your oil. You should have prepared like I prepared. You should have went to church like I went to church. You should have read your Bible. You should have you lived your life for the best of your ability like I did it. And you, you should have prepared for this moment. But you went to sleep and you only brought enough. Come on. You didn't factor in that maybe it could have been a delay. You didn't factor in that maybe it could have been a distraction. And so they told these five, they said, I'm sorry, we can't help you. What they had to do was the five foolish had to go and try to buy some oil. But by the time they made it back, you can read it on your own time, the doors were shut. Uh huh. They could not get in. And this is likened the kingdom of God. About time you think you're trying to get it right and live right, it might be too late. Y'all don't want to say. It might be the last time. And we can't wait till tomorrow to try to fix our lives. Or we can't wait till next week to try to get it together. We got to get it together now, whatever that means. But my moral for telling the moral of the story is that you got to have oil. If you don't have nothing else, I got to have oil. I need you to set it out of your mouth. Say, if I don't have nothing else, say, I got to have some oil. Come on, say, I got to have enough for my journey. I got to have enough to make sure that I make it in. And so that's the importance of oil. We have this widow woman here. I just break break so you could understand that. We got this widow woman here who is basically telling the prophet, all I got is some oil. She does not recognize uh -huh, in her mind or in her spirit that the oil is everything that she needs. That she don't need anything, no other additives. She don't need no other sugar. She don't need no fructose. She don't, she don't need no syrup and she don't need no honey. She don't, she don't need no cheese. And I can't eat a hamburger unless it got some cheese on it. I'm sorry. She don't need no bread. She, all she need is that oil. Amen. That's all she needs. And, and, and he basically, he begins to tell, he said, all I got is some, a jar of oil in my house. I want to stop right here and let you know this, I'm just, is just figuratively speaking. She's basically saying all I have is just this type of oil. I want y'all to see that so you can compare to what we're going to talk about in just a moment. All she has is a little bit. And then he basically, he tells her, he said, listen, take that oil, the third verse says, and I want you to go and borrow vessels from everywhere. I got to stop right here. Everywhere. Everywhere. Which means you got to stretch your mentality. He didn't say go borrow vessels from your mama and your cousins and just the people that you know and the people that you are familiar with. He said go and borrow vessels from everywhere, uh, all around you. And so in order to receive this next blessing and this next um, eternal blessing over your life, you got to make sure that you enlarge your mentality to understand that he didn't say just borrow a little. He said go everywhere from all of your neighbors and get empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. Let me stop right here. I love for my revelation. I I love how he said get empty vessels the Lord told me he said I want you to see vessels Latoya as people he said I want you to see them as people that come in your life that I allow to cross your path as empty vessels he said because if they're empty vessels then God or whatever I've placed in you or in God I can pour in them he said but if they show up too full y'all don't want to say amen there's nothing come on that you can actually pour in because they already have enough so he said go and borrow some empty vessels don't go borrow a vessel that's got kool-aid already in it I, I, that's got something i need you to pour that out and allow me to pour what i want to pour in there's a scripture that says we cannot pour new wine into old wine skins at least it bursts out so he says go and get some fresh go and get some 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 vessels that are empty and it says, this is another key word for those of y'all that are listening to the prophetic word of God today. It says, don't just get a few. So he's prophesying already that what God's getting ready to do for you, don't get too little because it's going to be big. <laughs> what God wants to do for you is, is, is going to be big. So I'm telling you ahead of time, don't try to go and get something small. I'm telling you, don't get just a little. Don't just get 
a few because sometimes we are so modest when we're in our season of overflow, when we're in our season of trying to get a miracle. We modest. If somebody tell you, I'm going to take you out on a shopping spree and you got this amount of money to spend, I'm going to spend $5,000 on you, y'all don't want to say amen. And, and, and you go to the store and you come back and, and you ring up the ticket and it's only $250. I'm, I'm talking to people who are givers and then they have to tell you, no, go back in there. I said $5,000 and get what you want. This is basically what the prophet is telling her. Don't get just a little. Don't get a few because what God wants to do for you, you're going to have to expand your mind because we are good at giving to others, but we are not good when others are trying to give to us. We are good at giving our last dollar to others, but when somebody is trying to pour into us, we got an issue. So he tells her, don't get just a little. I need you to get something larger. I need you to get something grande. I need you to get big in your perception. I need you to get large in your eyes. I need you to go after that thing that you dreamed when you were five years old. I need you to get that dream that you saw you saw yourself in it. I need you to go back and grab that thing that even though now you're 40 and you're 50 and you're 60 and it seems like it's not going to happen. I need you to go back and get that thing because that's what I'm going to do for you. Life hits so hard that we stop dreaming. Life hits so hard and we be like, oh, well, I'm past the age for that to happen. I, I wrote that down and that didn't go the way I wanted to go. And we start throwing our dreams, Lady Marcia, in the trash. And, and, and we forget what God really spoke into us because at this moment, this woman is trying to live. At this moment, this woman, come on, is struggling. And, and he tells her, he said, go and borrow some vessels, not just a, 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 a few. Don't get just a few. And he says, the next part, it says, and when you have come in, this is what y'all need to hold on to. You shall shut the door behind you and your sons. I got to stop right here because the title or subtopic is this next blessing is going to cause you to close the door. It's called a closed door blessing. Okay, y'all don't get it. It's called a closed door blessing, which means he tells her, he says, you and your sons do what I told you to do. Come back in and I need you to shut the door behind you. Mind you, this is a woman who is expecting her sons to have to be taken in slavery, to be taken as bond slaves, to be taken uh -huh, out of their houses. And, and this is a woman trying to do everything she can before they come and take her service. So a woman who's about to lose her kids would do just about anything. A real mother, let me say it like that. If her th kids are being threatened to be taken from them, she'll do just about anything. I ain't going to say what anything is, but she'll do just about anything to make sure her kids aren't taken, aren't taken from her. And so they get here to this place and says, you and your sons. The Bible says that they sent the sons out. She sent her sons out. They went and they borrowed vessels. And they came back in and they done as the prophet Elijah said. They shut the door. I got to stop right here because some of us, we can't get blessed because our mouths are too big. When God said, shut the door. He may shut your mouth. He means quit telling people what he's doing in your life because everybody is not excited about what God is doing. Everybody don't want to see you blessed and prosperous. So this next blessing that he's giving to you, which is a miracle, is going to take you shutting your mouth. It's going to take you shutting the door until the proper time. I don't care if they are family. I'm talking to a five-member church. I don't care if they are your best friend. Uh-huh. You got to learn to shut your mouth uh, and close the door. That when you close the door and you finally come out, it'd be like, Pam, it'd be like your business. What? I didn't know you had that business. I didn't know you was even working on it. I didn't even know you was looking to be a homeowner. Well, it's none of your business. All you need to do is just thank God that God did it. Because some stuff we would have had a long time ago if we wouldn't have never told the closest people to us. Y'all don't want to say amen. You got to stop sharing everything that God has spoken to you, to people, because everybody is not excited. Y'all making me teach on a Wednesday night. They love you, but not enough to see you have more. They 
love you, but not enough to see you supersede generational curses and break cycles. They love you, but, but they look at themselves and say, how can God do that for him and her? And it's not happening for me. So some blessings, you got to make sure that you close the door. This woman was a widow woman. Her husband was a prophet. So you know there was word going around in town about the man of God left his family in debt. The man of God didn't take care of his family. The man of God was doing all this preaching and all up at the church and all that prophesying, but he didn't leave nothing, y'all. I'm trying to, he didn't leave nothing for his family. But let me tell you, sometimes uh, it's the saints of God that go through some of the worst trials and tribulations that while you are praying for other folks' kids, your kids acting a fool. You don't want to say, while God uses you to touch other people's marriages, somehow you and your husband fussing and fighting. Uh, God always flips the script. Uh, so never look at the condition that somebody's left in. I got the right church and we gonna ride. Never look at the condition that somebody is left in because you again on Sunday you don't know their story. You don't know what happened. You don't know I'm getting ahead of myself. If this man gave his last into the temple of God, into the kingdom of God, that created this miracle that's getting ready to happen. Y'all don't want to say amen. I was trying to hold that. I'm trying to hold it out the woods. I was trying to hold it. You don't know what the story is. You don't know why, the, how they got in the condition that they are in. And so they have to go and borrow these vessels. They have to, he said, don't borrow just a few, but borrow one. Get a whole lot. Go to all your neighbors and then come in and shut the door behind you. While they shut the door, because I don't have time to read it, while they shut the door, they are working, which means once you close yourself back in, once you get back in the house, that does not mean go to sleep. That means go to work. Uh-huh. That means go to work. Somebody shout, go to work. Say, even though the door closed, say, go to work. Say, even though your name ain't being called, say, go to work. Say, even though you ain't on the front line, say, go to work. Even though you ain't the one that they're looking at, somebody shout, go to work. And they shut the door behind them. The fifth verse says, so when they went in, went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her. I love this part. It says, and she poured it out. You can't get blessed if you don't pour out. I got to say it again. Only people who give understand this message right now. People on the other side are used to receiving, don't know how to pour. But it says that this woman poured out. Everything that she had, she poured out. And it says here, she poured, somebody shout, I got to pour out. Why? So God can pour in. I'm going to say it again. Say, I got to pour out. So God can pour in. Ooh, say it one more time. Say, I got to pour out. Think about it so God can pour in. The sixth verse says, now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. Here we are over here. She's pouring out. Out. Pouring out. Pouring out. Notice that these bottles are not the same size. Notice that I'm sure the bottles or the vessels that she brought in were not the same size vessels. Neighbors had different size of dishes. Y'all know y'all do. Everything is not the same. So she had containers that only could hold so much. So which is basically saying sometimes when you pour, you only pour according to the other person's capacity. I know I was going to lose somebody today. So there are some people who can handle a big pour. And then there are some vessels who only have the capacity to handle a small pour. But whatever vessel she had, she made sure she kept pouring. She kept pouring. My point for saying that is some of us are pouring into vessels who don't have the capacity that we have. So you still pouring, but what you pouring is wasting on the ground. I wish I had the right church. Oh, y'all, I wish.
wish I could holler like I just did, but uh, we get confused when you're trying to pour into people and you wonder what happened to the investment I made last year. Why you can't comprehend the poor? Why you can't comprehend the investment? It's because everybody does not have the same capacity. The reason you'll understand that someone doesn't have the same capacity is when you pour and it begins to spill over the ground. Not in overflow, but simply because it's no more room in that vessel. It's no more room in that mentality. It's no more room in that spirit. It's no more room in that mind. It's no more room in that heart. And so we get frustrated with people who have no more room. Because you married them. Y'all may be in at the same capacity. Twins, here you go. Somehow, you got enough word to start stretching your mind. You went from this size to a little wider in your thinking. They stayed the same. So what begins to happen is separation begins to happen. Because who only has this capacity now cannot comprehend what this capacity is saying. And it doesn't make them wrong, but the only part that makes them wrong is the fact that they're not willing to stretch to the next level. When people are not willing to stretch to the next level, you don't get upset. Don't get frustrated. I heard, I believe it was T.D. Jakes and Oprah were talking and basically said people only can love you from their level of, of capacity. And so the love you're expecting f- to get from them, they may not even have it because they're loving on their level. So <laughs> they're loving from their perception. Let me give you an example. There are men who say if I pay the bills, I love you, but they'll never look the woman in the eye and say I love you. They'll never tell their kids, I love you, but if all the bills are paid, they expect expect that it should be internalized as (laughs) if you got water, lights, and gas, then you know that daddy love you. You know know your husband husband love you. But all the time, that, that that, that is not the truth. You got to understand people have different capacities. And this woman is to the point to where she has all these vessels, and every time she pours into another vessel, look at this, the oil keeps flowing. She comes from having only one jar of oil to now you got all of these jars, I wish I had a whole lot more than this, that are now filled from one jar of oil. If we was really to look at it in a scientific way, in the natural, this jar was only supposed to fill up this jar. It was only supposed to be enough to fill up the same capacity. But somehow a miracle got in the middle of that oil and the oil began to stretch from one vessel to another another vessel until they got all the way to the point till there was nothing else left. She was pouring and pouring and pouring. And God told me to tell some of you all, y'all get tired of pouring. He said, but the pouring is your miracle. The pouring is where your oil flows. The pouring is how I want to use you. And so you meet somebody in Walmart and you don't feel like talking to them or giving them a testimony and talk about church not right now in Walmart. Not while I'm eating. But God says if you open yourself up and you pour, that is the oil continuing to flow in your life. The oil is not just supposed to work in the church. It ain't just supposed to work in the four walls. The oil on your life is supposed to work everywhere that you go, in the grocery store, in your car. You got to get in a position to always be ready to pour. Because I got to a point, I think it was three years ago, and I told God, I said, God, I'm pouring out, I'm pouring out. I said, but it just seems like no one is pouring back into me. And the Lord told me, he said, don't you know I see every pour? Don't you know I see every time you invest? Don't you know I see every time you speak the word? Don't you know every time you preach, you teach, and you help, and you encourage? Don't you know I see every pour? He said, your job is not to tell me what to do. Your job is just to be the pourer or your job is to be the vessel and he said every time you pour out he said that's when I pour in Uh and when I got that concept I never argued with God 
could have gotten frustrated again about how he wanted to use me because every time I poured, it may didn't come back from who I poured in, but somehow God took note of it and he wrote it down in his little book of memory and he brought it back up and he said, I remember every poor. I'm prophesying to about 20 people on a Wednesday night that God says he remember every poor. He remember every investment. He remember everybody you helped that didn't want nobody to know. He remember everybody you spoke a word of encouragement to. He remember everybody you helped behind closed doors. He remember every encouraging word. He remember everything that you taught. He remember everything that was said. And he said, don't just wait for it to come back from the person you poured into. He said, but I am the great pourer. And as you pour out, someone shout, God pours in. They get down to this last vessel. She's working so hard, she didn't even know she's on her last. And she says, there's no more left. The sons are like, mama, ain't no more. She said, well, I got all of these buildings. I only was supposed to have one. But I got several jars filled up with oil. This is a miracle from God. What I love about it is she didn't take the oil and do what she wanted to do with it. When she got to a point to where the oil stopped, she went back to the man of God to get more instruction. This is where some of us mess up. Once we get full, once we get what we, oh, thank you, it came to pass. Once you get married, woo, we don't see you no more. What, once God really bless you for real, Pastor God bless me real good. Once you finally get it, you don't just get it and think you can do what you want to do with it. Ask God since the oil has stopped, and not the oil didn't stop, but there was no more vessels. And since there's no more vessels, what do I do? She goes back to the man of God. And Elijah tells her, he says, take the oil and sell it. So I want to tell you, what's in your house may not be your physical house, may be, may be your spiritual house that can get you out of the situation that you are in. What is your niche? You can do it like nobody else can do it. You can say it like nobody else can say it. What is the thing that, and that's the problem with some people, they have not found out what their niche is. They have not found out their real true purpose. They have not found out their gift and their talent. And people who don't know what their niche is, they always watching somebody else's niche. They always watching what somebody else is doing and what somebody else got going on. Why don't you find out what God blessed you with? Why don't you find out the gifts that God put on the inside of you? Once you find out the that's on your life, then that's when the blessings of God begin to flow. And he began to tell, he said, listen, take it and sell it. Which then now he introduces her a business, which means I'm not going to just give you fish. I'm going to teach you how to fish. I'm not just going to do it for you, but I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to show you that what's in you can cause a business to come out of you. I'm going to show you what's in you can change lives. I'm going to show you what's in you come on, can cause blessings to open up. I'm going to show you that what's in you can change you and your family's lives. I'm going to show you what's in you that you're looking for everybody else, but it's in you. She get here. And this woman finds out she got an oil business. She is pouring oil. Enough. It had to have been enough that she said, sell it. He said, sell it. Then he said, live off the rest. Not just you, but you and your two sons. It was enough to live off the rest. I wish y'all could really catch what I'm trying to say. If you really tap into what God has put on the inside of you, if you really tap into the oil that's on your life, whether you like it, whether you like it or not, or whether you think it's insignificant or not, if you tap into what God has created and gifted you to do, you will have it for the rest.
rest of your life if you use it right and use it to God's ability or use it to the best of your ability you won't have to worry about anything you got to just tap into the oil on your life I need somebody to open your mouth and say I got to tap into the oil come on say that's on my life not nobody else's oil but God what did you call me to do what did you call me to say where did you call me to go uh -huh. what is it on me that a cause change to be broken what is it in me that will cause my life to be changed somebody shout it's bigger than what you can even see it's bigger than what you can even imagine. And if you keep hanging around people with small capacities, if you keep hanging around people with small minds, uh, I love how they got in the family business together. I bet you they was like, we ain't going to be no slaves. Uh, we got to help mama pull this oil. I ain't going, we ain't finna, uh-uh. We, we got whatever mama, what you say, it's working. I don't know what you're doing at that church, but it's working. I don't know what's going on, but it's working for our household. We ain't going to have to go and be no bonds made servants. Uh, we, it's working. I'm going to get many, oil, many vessels as you want me to get. What else you need me to do, mama? Because I know that this shouldn't be here. And when your kids start seeing miracles uh, and the favor of God in your family, they'll start saying, mama, I know there is a car. Because I know we started out the month with $20. Uh, how did we make it? I saw the bank account. How did we get to the end of the month? Uh, I saw what we were working with. And when your kids start seeing the oil is working. That's a miracle. <laughs> oh, oh, I heard God say, I just healed five people who have poured out and it seems like things have not come back the way that they should. And family members made fun and said, you ain't got to do all that. He said, I'm about to shut their mouth. When you shut the door, I'm going to shut their mouth. And I'm going to start releasing favor. And I'm going to start releasing miracles. And I'm going to start opening doors for you. I'm going to start making ways out of no way. Isn't it funny how God will hold a blessing until you get around the right people? Isn't it funny how God will hold a miracle until you get with the right group of people? people because he know that you ain't gonna do nothing but allow them to take it from you you ain't gonna do nothing but give it all to him he'll wait till you shut the door in order to give you a miracle he'll wait till you get in an isolated place and you're now focused on what he calls you to do I want to remind you that this family is blessed not just because she talked to the prophet. The family is blessed because the father left a legacy. Not in money, but he left an inheritance and in service unto God. Which means that even when people leave this earth, if they didn't leave any wealth, if they didn't leave any money, but if they were a Christian, if they were a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, miracles had to happen on the behalf of the people who are still breathing. Y'all don't want to talk right. Some of y'all are blessed for somebody else who's already gone on to glory, but they had a walk with Jesus. They had a talk with Jesus. They had a relationship with Jesus. And that relationship has to recognize I got seed in the earth and I need them to be taken care of. I got children and I need it to be taken care of. Lord, I got a praise that's going in my future that's going to take care of my wife. I got a praise that's going in my future that's going to take care of my kids. Anybody got a praise like that? God, we've been dropping in here like this every time. May not seem like it's working. May not seem like all of this don't make sense. That people can choose to live in comfort while you have to sacrifice. God says, I see every sacrifice and I'm going to reward those of you all who have poured out until you had nothing left. He said, go you and your sons I need you to sell it. Don't keep it. Sell it. Second thing was 
We missed this one too. Pay your debt. I got to say it one more time. When God bless you real good and he give you enough to live you and your family. He said, pay your debt. And what I love about it is because when Minister Amos said, hallelujah, Lord, her testimony came back to me that when she went to her debtors and she told them, this is all I got. And her debt was $3,000. And she went and told them, and they said, bring whatever you got. And she got $300 of her $3,000 of debt, not down to be able to pay $300. That's what I believe happened in this story, that if you take what God has you and you have integrity and you go back to those debtors and you go back to those creditors and say this is what I have and you pay your debt it's going to be enough for you to be debt free I wish y'all could praise God that's what I was trying to say for the last 15 minutes I've been trying to say it it's going to be debt free you will owe no man on it no note no car note no house note may take you a little longer to get there but you will be debt free I need somebody to open your mouth and shout debt free Shout it again, debt free. You will become debt free. So I need you to sell it, the money you get from it. I just saw God knock a $300,000 debt down. I don't know who it is. God has not shown me. I don't know if you're in the building or if you're not in the building. But I just saw God knock a debt down of $300,000. And he said, I'm going to put it in half. You'll only have to pay $150. you all don't want to say amen. But you, some of y'all can't even comprehend those numbers. But you got to get a big perception. Because what God is trying to give to you, it ain't small. What God is trying to bless with you, it ain't minute. What God is trying to put in your hands, you're going to have to know how to manage it. Because we are prospering in the pandemic. We are prospering when it should be hell. We are prospering. When things should be going wrong. Isn't that like God? <laughs> Somebody getting debt free. That's what that sounds like. Somebody's getting debt free. Somebody's getting debt free. He's enlarging your capacity. You only dream that it can happen, but it's getting ready to happen for you. I can imagine this woman trying to figure out how all of this is working. How does the vessels keep showing up? How does the oil keep pouring? How did I get out of there? She had to obey the instructions that were given to her. What I want to say, the prophet did not show up to just lay hands on her. The prophet did not just show up to sling oil on her. But the job of this specific prophet at this specific time was to speak divine instructions to the Lord. And so you got to understand that even if your pastor or your prophet or whoever, which in this house, uh, lay hands on you or talk to you, that every time it's not for them to slay you out in the spirit, sometimes through the word of God, God will give you divine revelation on instructions on your next move uh, what you're supposed to be doing, where you're supposed to be doing it at, uh, when is the time to do it. If you listen closely, some of y'all got instructions on tonight. If you listen closely, some of y'all got your way out on tonight. If you listen closely, somebody got your next move on tonight. If you listen closely, somebody got their way out. His job was to instruct and give divine instructions that were given from the Holy Spirit concerning her situation. It looked foolish, but it was God. It looked crazy, but it was God. People going to think you look foolish, but when they see your foolish blessing, when they see your foolish miracle, this going to shut their mouths because they know that you had nothing. How did you get this? They know, uh-huh, you weren't supposed to have it. You weren't supposed to be it. It has to be a miracle. It has to be a miracle. It has to be a miracle. Oh, God, y'all help me.
me tonight. You ain't supposed to be here. It has to be a miracle. You are not supposed to think the way you're thinking. It has to be a miracle. God says, I'm working a miracle in your life. If you obey the instructions, if you obey what I tell you to do, and you obey it to the T, because a good heart is still not obedience. Good intentions is still not obedience. Saying I was getting ready to do it is not obedience. Obedience is not done until you follow the full instructions of the Lord. So, let me share this testimony for those of you all who want to know what strict obedience is. Some of y'all heard it, you're going to hear it again. After we had our wreck, the Lord allowed us to get a better vehicle. Most of you all know an upgrade than the one that we had. We were still able to pay it off, which is what we wanted. However, we went ahead and got Pastor Harris a truck so that we can have two like we had at first from the one we gave away. And we went to the car place, and we got a note. And a few days into it, Wednesday night, last Wednesday night, when the Holy Spirit fell in this place, and I was on the wall where he's standing at now, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and he said, take the truck back. I said, is that you, Lord? I stayed on that wall a long time, if y'all can remember. You sure, Lord? He said, take it back. He said, the reason I'm telling you to take it back is because what I told you was debt free. He said, that's what I said. So we took it back. Dropped it off on the lot. They still confused to this day. But within a few days, someone shout a few days. days. Pastor Harris found him something, and it's paid in full. He said, I'm not doing this just for you. I'm doing this that others can see that you can be dead in your own way. You can have what you want to have if you just be patient and if you just wait on me, said the Lord. If you just wait on him to do it, he can blow your mind. He can clear your debt. But you got to be fully obedient, which means that I don't care if you're halfway in there. Pull yourself out if you're going the wrong way and be fully obedient to God. I don't care if you're halfway in the relationship and you know it ain't right. Pull yourself out of it and be obedient to God. I I don't care if you're halfway in the sea. Pull yourself out of it and be fully obedient to God. You can get out of it before it's too late. Get out of it before you say I do. Get out of it before you marry. Oh, I feel calm. Get out of it before you go on a date. Get out of it. Bag it up. Bag up. Change your mind. And don't care who, who got to say about it. Don't care who got to judge about it. I don't owe you no explanation. I don't owe to tell you why I did what I did. I'm being obedient to car. And as you walk with car, you will see the favor of car upon your life. Somebody shout death free. Shout again death free. Shout it one more time death free. Somebody else in here tonight, the Lord says, I'm going to do the same thing for you. Ditto concerning your vehicles. Somebody in here, you got 5000 and a few dollars left on your car. Who is that? 5000 and some dollars left on your car. 
God says, I'm going to give you the means to pay it off. I'm going to give you the means to pay it off. And it won't tear up before you pay, pay it off. Y'all know what happens when you get close to paying something off. He said, but I'm freeing. The reason I'm doing it is because I'm freeing up some debt in your life. I'm freeing up some of these bills that keep suckering and taking. Sometimes you got to take the low road in order to take the high road. Sometimes you got to look like you ain't got nothing while everybody else walking around prancing with everything and looking like they prospering. Sometimes you got to walk around and be like, I'm shutting the door. Think what you want to think. I'll drive this raggedy Honda if I got to. Say what you want to say because I'm saving money. I'm putting back. I'm preparing from my future. Talk about me if you want to, but just wait uh -huh, until next year. Just wait until this time next year. You're going to be looking like, what in the world happened? I got three and a half minutes. I got three and a half minutes. I like preaching to people who are excited about the word. We don't need a whole lot. We just need people who are obedient. We just need people who are obedient. We need people who are obedient. Student loans. You gonna bargain? You gonna tell them this is what I got? And God said, do it now. I don't know who I'm talking to. And you tell them this is what I got. What can I give you to clear my debt? Because when you have debt, you can't sleep right. When you got debt over your head, you come on, you're stressed out. Trying to figure out how you're going to make ends meet. No need to have $60,000 in debt, and you can't even get a job that's $60,000. Y'all don't want to say amen. There is a paraphrase, because y'all won't let me finish. A similar situation, if we backtrack, I believe it's in 1 Kings talks about the widow woman at Zarephath with Elijah. She's in a similar situation. I got to bake this cake. And she said, me and my son, we going to die. Isn't God crazy? Not God ain't crazy, but don't it, God look like he just going to add up? The prophet said, give me some cake first. And then you... Us, me, you, we're going to eat off the rest. And we won't starve until the rain comes back. Which means while they were in a famine, God allowed. Let me tell y'all something for those that don't believe in prophets. Let me tell you something. Every time there's a famine, he sends a prophet to either lock it up or open it. Y'all don't want to say amen. Every time, come on, Elijah, it won't rain until I say so. But what you don't understand is even the prophet that speaks it, I heard my bishop say this, even the prophet that speaks it, it hurts them as well. Because they have to struggle as well. So a prophet is not there to speak what you want to hear. A prophet is there to speak the will of God concerning you. And so that th this woman said, this, oh, my God, we got this cake. We're going we to eat this. We're going to die. But what I love about it is when you eat with a prophet, when not just a, a, a person, a prophet, but a person who can see past their current condition, when you eat with them, you won't eat alone and you won't eat by yourself. Y'all all going to eat. The, I just can prophesy. You, the next people you sit at the table with, Shakibra, you won't just be preparing the meal or providing the food or taking them out to eat. He said, y'all all going to eat together. Since you spoke the word, uh huh. Since I obeyed your instructions, and you ate some of my flour, and you got some of my oil, which means God sending you good partners in this season. He's sending you faithful people who know how to give and take, and not just take and take. You're gonna be replenished in this season. You're gonna be to the place of restore in this season because your partnership is changing. You're changing partners. Y'all gonna fight over who gonna pay the bill. You're about to be that blessed. Yeah. Elder Woods, she said, me and you, we're going to eat. My last one, because I feel like I'm here, I'm there, but I'm trying to bring all the stories together, is the next scripture after 2 Kings, the fourth chapter. 
it goes on down the fourth chapter, I believe, down to the 13th verse. It begins to go into, then God sends Elisha Lisha, to a place where he had commanded a woman to feed him. Yeah. Matter of fact, it, beglo- it goes into the story where he's passing this woman's house. But the Bible says that's where I met. He's, she was a great woman. Which means the woman before was a poor woman. Now he's running into a wealthy woman that's married. So a prophet will hit you whether you're poor or whether you're rich. It don't matter if you got money, because most of the time the people who are poor are rich in faith. Uh huh. And a lot of times the people who are wealthy come on lack faith. Y'all don't want to say not all the time, but most of the time. And so she he keeps passing this house and this woman's house and this woman. The Bible says I don't have time to go there. That she perceived that he was a man of God. She perceived that Elijah was a man of God. The word perception, which means to know. And then she realized she came to a bright light. She was able to see that this was a man of God, and she asked her husband. She said, go and make a room in this house, y'all. Make a room. It just don't even look right. Everything that God works miracles in the natural, it just don't look right. It don't look right to spit on a man's eye and uh, get some dirt and put it in his eye and his eyes is open because it don't look right. Some people are looking at you, but you don't look right to them. But what they don't know is that you are a walking miracle. You don't know how I got to this point. It was some crazy stuff that happened in my life. It was some stupid stuff that I had to go through. It was some crazy valleys. It was some crazy ditches. You wouldn't even understand. I'm almost done. It was crazy. They get to this place. I love the word of God. He said, make, thank you, Elder Knight. He said, make me a bed. He s- she said, put him a dresser. She had to have money to renovate her house. For somebody who probably only came once a year. Y'all don't want to say amen. amen. She had to put wood in construction to build on to their house to make a place for the man of God. And, and he come, she comes and, and she has everything together. See, when somebody bless you real good, it just seems like you ought to bless them back. Something in you just make you feel like, what can I do for somebody? They were so kind, and uh huh. Because people who don't give, they don't know that feeling. They don't know they just take and run off. But those of y'all that know that somebody has done something for you, and you ain't even got enough money to repay them. You, you can. Oh my God, I wish I could praise God like I want to. You don't even got enough praise that can take him. You ain't got enough real estate that can tell God thank you. You ain't got enough money in your bank to tell him. Thank you. You ain't got enough to tell some people who who took that time to pull you up uh, and change your life uh, and put you on the right track. You ain't got enough but just to thank you. Elijah says, for all you've done for me, that's why you never think that when you give to a person that you're paying them or you are paying for the anointing on their life because the anointing is priceless i'm gonna say it again that oil y'all don't want that rich oil what you went through that all on your life is priceless and so what people do they basically are tipping you they basically are saying thank you and it's good so elijah goes and he says since you've done all this come on i I need to get my other servant what can i do for you um what can i do for you woman and she's basically say i only stay with my own kind you can read it at your own time i don't fool around with everybody else and i just stay amongst my own people all is well y'all know that church talk we do all is well god is good i'm favored and blessed and highly favored of the lord oh god has been good if i i got 99 problems but a praise ain't one Y'all know who that is, don't you? God is good. And she gets all that Christendom talking. Uh huh. His assistant says, No, I see that there's no little feet running around here. I see, uh huh, there's no baby food and diapers. I don't see any kids. She is lacking something, which means that sometimes you can't look at people on the outside and try to see what they need. Uh huh. Sometimes it's an inner thing. You may need money on the outside, but somebody may need their heart fixed. Somebody need, may need to get delivered from depression. And so you got to be able to have a prophetic eye to see through what people show you. He said, no, I see that something else is wrong. She's lacking. Y'all know the story. 
she speaks and he tells her, this is the part where I'm going to stop it. By this time, next year, he will be whole. That's the language. I want to tell you who pressed your way on this Wednesday night. Mark it down. July 1st, 2000. Put it in your calendar. We do it all the time, and when something significant happens and we look on that calendar, we be like, God said it. 2020, 836 Central Standard Time. God said, the thing that I desire, that his, that is his desire, I will have it, I will hold it, I will possess it, this time next year you will praise about it you're going to testify about it you're going to share about it and God says some of y'all wrote down one thing but didn't I tell y'all don't get just a few I told you to get something big which means that the one thing that you get when you find your niche your niche is attached attached to everything else one door Elder Woods we talked about it two weeks ago will open up doors to all of these other doors all you need the key is to one door all you need to do is to walk in the oil that God has placed over your life and when you walk in that oil it will bring in endless favor so all I need is just one opportunity in front of the right people at the right time I'm ready and I'm prepared anybody ready and prepared I dare you to clap your hands and give God some praise come on clap your hands and give God some praise I hope this word has rejuvenated you I hope it's caused you to rethink I hope it's caused you to go back and scratch out your vision because it's too small. <laughs> Rewrite it and let big come into your household. Let big come in your mind. Keep pouring that oil. Oprah ain't the only one. Tyler Perry ain't the only one. <laughs> T.D. Jakes ain't the only one. <laughs> Dr. Todd M. Hall ain't the only one. <laughs> you got to see yourself. shutting the door the Lord showed me something a week ago and it scared me I was in my sleep in a good way and what he showed me I could not be in my sleep he really showed me he can believe for everybody else You can do it, girl. I see you ain't this all the time. You can do it, girl. You're a great encourager. You can do it, girl. Go ahead, try. But when it comes to you, it seems like that energy dissipates. <laughs> but when God showed me that vision, he said, I'm not a respectable person. He said, if you're obedient to me, if I showed it to you, you can have it. If I promise to you, he said, will it not come to pass? I'm going to do exactly what I said I'm going to do. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how many mistakes you made. I don't care how many times you turns you made. I don't care how many times you've fallen. God is a God. He's a gracious God that he can pick you back up again. He can redeem the time, as I told you on Sunday, and he can put you right in position. Uh -huh. And God says, once you see yourself and perceive and change your perception, not just about others but how you think about yourself he said then you'll be smack dab in the will of God but you gotta see yourself there see it see it this is amazing years back we had one bank account when we first got married and we were struggling to live off of this one bank account and 
and we live in overdraft lane. He get his check, he get some money, that next check hit overdraft. He thought that was the way to live. We didn't have no other way. <laughs> Bills were still getting paid. I don't know who I'm talking to. But God says, I need you to break that spirit of borrowing money. Now, back up for some of y'all that may question, well, why did the man of God tell her to go borrow if, if she was already in debt? Uh-huh, for some of y'all. Why he tell her to go borrow when she was already already in debt? God would tell you to borrow for the last time. Mother, help me preach for the last time. If you a good person, I know hopefully she tipped somebody for their vessel. That she went back and said, thank you for a vessel. Here's a little bit of oil. You're going to borrow for the last time. The begging and borrowing days are over. Once we got that system, few years back, the Lord said, open up accounts like you got it. I didn't understand the concept. What you need three accounts for when you got $30? Don't make sense, Lord. Somehow, as we began to do what God told us to do, money began to show up. Y'all know what I'm talking about. In places where there was nothing. Which means that you've got to act on faith, Brianna, like it's already there. He's just waiting on you to go and get the vessel. That's all he's saying. Go and get the vessel. That's the word of the Lord on today. Clap your hands and praise the name of the Lord. If you're watching by live, I'm going to ask that you share with us in giving at this time. We're getting ready to give our tithes and our offerings, and we're getting ready to give into this word on today. Again, no amount of money can pay for the word of God, the written word of God, the prophetic word of God. We basically tip God and tell him, God, I thank you for what I have, and I want you to sacrifice. You can give by give us our PayPal cash app. Um, you can even give by credit card if you're here in the, in the building today. But I don't want us just to leave emotional lives, which we never do. But I want us to leave help today. I want us to be sober tonight. I want us to leave, leave sober tonight. That you go home and you digest that word and you become so, so hungry. What was that wave for, sister? That blessed me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. That you go home and you read. The word of God for yourself. Go back over the scripture and find out what's in you, mother. T find out what's in you that's going to make you money. Well, and, and I'm not mean like money like that, but in the Bible, it says sell it and live off the rest. Find what's in you that's in your heart and make it. Blessings. If you're going to give today, I'm going to encourage some of y'all to spread. Some of y'all have already given on tonight. I appreciate it. Y'all been giving every time we preach. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you all to give excitingly tonight. Give.